Hello and welcome to Scottish Car Enthusiasts and Trains TV and it's the return of the car reviews and in this episode we're going to take a look at the Citroen C4 Cactus. Andre Citroen was born on the 5th of February 1878 and during a trip to Poland while serving in the military he bought a patent of herringbone gears. If you don't know what herringbone gears are, I'll show you now. These are herringbone gears. Herringbone gears are chevron shaped. A few years later he founded a gear factory. And in 1919 he converted his gear factory to mass produce cars. The first car he produced was the 10 horsepower Type A. An all steel bodied car, a floating engine, a unibody chassis, and traction avant, aka front wheel drive. Let's fast forward now to the 5th of February 2014 and to the launch of the C4 Citroen Cactus. Is this a tribute to Andre? Let's find out. Today we are focusing on the first generation C4 Cactus from 2014-2017. The Cactus is built in Spain and is based on the PSA PF1 platform that underpins the C3 and DS3. Although larger than a C3, it is roughly the same width as a C3. So, let's have a look at the cactus in more detail. And the most standout feature of the cactus is the black mouldings on the door. These are called air bump. These mouldings are air filled capsules designed to resist car parking, dents and knocks from trolleys. Ah, can't be bored putting my trolley away, I'll just let it roll away. And like a mini, you can customise these with the option of four colours. You can have black, grey, chocolate and June. The black theme continues with the black sill covers and wheel arches. This cactus is complemented with 16 inch alloys called squares by Citroen. But these are not the original wheels for this car, as I'll show you in this video. So you join me in this little insert um, during the Citroen C4 Cactus review. And this is the reason why the Cactus now wears alloys. So this is the basic wheel trims that you get with the entry level touch model. Now, I think these were a lighter grey at one time. Somebody has actually taken the effort and I think sprayed them black. And it was one of the things that um, at the time of purchasing the car was that I was not happy with the wheel trims um, at the time. So that is one of the reasons why the Cactus wears the alloys. But if you are interested in a cactus and uh, an entry level cactus, then this is a 15 inch uh, wheel trim. And this car is wearing 19565R15s. So that's just a little insert. So as you can see from the video I've just inserted, 
these aren't original equipment. The car actually comes with steel wheels as this is the entry level touch model aka poverty spec goodness can't afford the higher spec model edition touch moving around to the rear and the air bumps continue around the car and again you can customize this panel here and the air bumps here in the choice of four colours I mentioned earlier. Moving into the boot. You have 358 litres of space and this can be increased by um, folding down the back seat. Now I've got two quibbles with this car. The first one, if you're going to be carrying bulkier items, then you'll probably find that the load lip is quite high. So, if you're going to put a washing machine in this, in this car, you might be damaging it, or you might not be able to get it in. Now, I'm going to show you the second feature that I do not like on this car. And the other thing I was going to demonstrate but I can't unfortunately due, due to having issues trying to release the isofix on the one of the child seats is that if you fold the rear bench or the backrest of the seat uh, it only folds completely down in one piece so if you were doing a tip run and you had to take a child with you that ain't going to happen but that's part of um, Citroen's sort of um, minimalist and weight saving ideas which we'll cover shortly. Moving around to the front of this cactus, you have this sort of cute, friendly face. Um, sort of broken up with the sort of bad boy style daytime running lights here and here. Down below, you have the headlights and indicators, more air bumps, again, headlights, more air bumps, and the lower grill here, and you've also got the blanking, the blanking panels for where front fog lights would be. So let's look. Uh, let's have a look at the engine bay. So in the Cactus, there is a choice of two main engines. There's a petrol and a diesel. But the petrols have varying outputs, and so do the diesel. We're going to look particularly at this one. This is a 1.2. 1199cc, 3-cylinder, 1.2 PureTech. This produces 82 brake horsepower and 118 newton meters of torque. Top speed of this car is 106 mile an hour and a 0 to 60 of 12.9 seconds. Uh, fuel economy wise, expect around 42 to 44 around the town and 55 plus miles per gallon on a longer run. Tailpipe emissions are 105 grams per kilometer and road tax for this version is 30 pound a year. So let's just have a look at uh, fluid levels and I'll show you where to top up the oil. This here is the coolant tank. You have the screen wash here. You have your oil fill dipstick, air filter, brake fluid and battery. Fuse box off the off here. Quite a compact little engine. Um, you can also get this as a turbocharged petrol and you can also get a 75 brake horsepower engine um, this as well. There's not too much a difference between this and the 82 brake horsepower. So, now that we've had a look under the engine bay, let's have a look inside the cactus. So, the first thing you're going to notice when you get into a cactus is how minimalist it looks. And as I alluded to earlier, Citroen were on a mission to um, 
save weight on this car. Um, this car weighs under a ton, I think it's 975 kilograms this car weighs. So there's a lot of weight saving uh, things that we've done in this car and I'm going to show you things. Well, first of all, let's start with the door. So as I mentioned, um, they were aiming to be minimalist, so thing, maybe perhaps a nod back to the 2CV. So on the door, you've got scratchy hard plastic, you've got a nice weighty door handle that's in a silver effect chrome. Moving down you've got this piano black uh, trim, incorporating the speaker underneath with the electric window switches. Got a nice little bit of fabric here as an armrest, and instead of a door hand, a plastic door handle, you have this um, luggage inspired strap, which looks quite neat and is actually quite functional. And that continues along the door here. More scratchy black plastic, and you've got a little door bin here. And one of the features I like on the door is I quite like these little. I don't know, little mini air bumps are not food, they're not air, but they sort of mimic that air bump feel. Moving down onto the dashboard, you've got again, you've got this piano black trim here. You've got first of only three air vents in this car. Moving down, I think this is one of the best features this car's got, and I've not seen it on any other maker car. Normally, when you have child locks, you have to activate a little switch on the back doors. Citroen and Peugeot seem to have this little button here, which means you can activate the child lock on the rear doors. Now I find this quite handy, especially if you carry maybe like an adult passenger, um, maybe you're doing like an airport run, and you simply just push that button, and you can let your passengers out and just push it back on again. You've got your headlight, Headlight leveling switch here, and your electric mirrors switch here. We're not heated, just, just electric mirrors. Down below that, you've got a little cubby hole for your Loch Ness Monster. The minimalistic feel continues with this um, instrument cluster. So, this is all we've got on the instrument cluster. You've got a little uh, little warning lights there. So if you come up down the bottom here. Now, you don't have a rev counter and you don't have a temperature gauge, which I think is a pretty poor show from the Citroen in regards to the temperature gauge. Um, but I, I can live without a rev counter and it's worth noting all models of the Cactus don't have a rev counter or don't have an external temperature gauge. This little box here, this displays your indicator, um, gear lever indicator, and once I'll start the engine and I can show you another little feature this car has. Now I've started the engine here and you can see another little box has popped up. This is your cruise control. It's quite handy to have on our entry level version. Um, it's, it's a weird spec because I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you another couple of features it doesn't have. Moving to the steering wheel, it's, uh, got, it's a flat bottom at the bottom. Uh, it's a rubbery steering wheel, it's not leather or anything like that. But on the right here, you've got your stereo controls. So volume up, volume down. Wait till the truck passes by, list of stations I'm guessing, source button, and a rolling dial to select things with. It's also worth noting that the button here it says source and telephone. This car doesn't have Bluetooth so you cannot connect a phone to it. Moving, <clears throat> moving around to the other side of the steering wheel. You have your cruise control, which is a bit confusing because it's got the same plus and minus as stereo controls. And the amount of times I've hit this, turn the volume up and not get anything. 
So that's that's the set speed. That's the decrease of speed. Memory. You've got a speed limit here as well. You can also a speed limiter and a little pause button to, to turn cruise control off. Horn push here. <laughs> And indicator stack on the left, and a false button here. I'm guessing at one point Citroen, or Peugeot, just took a stack stock of the car with maybe a horn and push on the end of it because this button does nothing. Right hand side, we have our windscreen wipers. It's a two-speed wiper and it's just a, a, an extra swipe down here and this button on this stock this actually does controls the functions of the trip computer so you could find out your, your trip one trip two and how many miles are left in the tank Moving into the middle of the dash, you have this um, seven inch touch screen. And you know me, I absolutely hate touch screens. But I'm going to make a compromise on this one because I'm going to show you why. So, being the entry level model car, you don't get things like air conditioning, you don't get things like sat nav. So, it makes the touch screen so much nicer to use. So, at the moment we've got heater controls and it's also displaying what radio station we're listening to. And if you want to change your radio station for example, push it, brings up the list of stations and you can select what you want. Control your fan speed here. You can control, control where you want the heat to be from. So if it, uh, this button here is the heating button. This one is the car control button. So you, again, you, you can use, as I said, you can, men, you can use a stock on the, wind, the, the button on the windscreen wiper stack and it will tell you can scroll through this on the move. So you've got your trip here, you've got your trip to here. This one here, you've got your current figures. Next button down is your music. And if you're looking to change your source, you just I'll go back there. You could push this button here, and it brings up USB, iPod, AUX, FM, or AM. This car also has, I'm not kidding you, a calculator. And at the minute I can't remember how you get the calculator, but if you go through the menus you can um, find the calculator. But things like, if you go back into car menu, push this button here, you get things like your speed settings, your tyre pressure monitoring system, vehicle settings, diagnostic checks. Things like vehicle settings, automatic wipe, rear wipe on reverse, unlock, unlock boot only, vehicle access, not all very much on the base model that you can do. Moving down you have got some buttons here, so this is your volume control for your radio and your power off and on button. Got your heated rear window here, sorry, your demisting setting for the windscreen here, for blowing hot air on on a cold day. Heated rear window, that's your central locking button, traction control off, a blanking switch here, and your hazard warning lights here. Moving down, again you've got these piano black air vents, these are the last two air vents in the car, and moving down here. You have your 12 volt here, a little cubby hole for a box of mints, uh, some hand gel as we're still meant to be living in COVID times, and a USB socket here. Now, this is my third gripe on this car, is 
it doesn't always retain the memory of where you left off on your USB. You can maybe switch on the ignition and you can maybe say you've played track 10 and on your USB stick. If you come out in the morning it could be on track 14. I don't know if that's maybe like a software issue on this, um, but it is a bit of an annoyance. Again, moving down to the bottom here, you've got another little cubby here for um, hand gel, money and the likes. On one of the Citroen forums or Facebook groups, you can get a little cup holder because Citroen only give you one cup holder. Moving down to the gear lever, again, this, if you're very familiar with Peugeot's or Citroen's of this sort of age, you'll find this gear lever in most Peugeot and Citroen's. And we have a mechanical handbrake. Now, one of the most outstanding features I think in this car is this, what I call the KFC stroke Burger King shelf stroke McDonald's shelf. There's enough space for you to have a McDonald's or a feast here. And you'll have seen it in a couple of videos on one of the quirks I've filmed earlier. And again, you've got this piano black trim here. And this, I think, is one of the best features, aside from the air bump, is this glove box. So this glove box is eight, provides you with 8.5 litres of storage space. You've also got the passenger airbag off here. And this little silver ring, that is your jack for playing, like, say, an MP3 player. Now, you might think, oh, it's got a big glove box. Where's the passenger airbag? The passenger airbag is incorporated into the roof here somewhere. And this was a first for Citroen, as I believe it's first, they were the first car manufacturer to put an airbag in the roof. Moving down to the bottom here. Behind this panel here, this is where you would find your OBD, OBD2 port. And just here is your bonnet release. Now, again, Citroen, it's a bit flimsy. It's very, it feels very, very cheap. But it does do the job. So, before we go for a drive, let's go and have a look in the rear of the car. So you join me in the rear of the cactus and I just thought I'd demonstrate um, the sort of practicality levels here. So headroom, just my hat here. I've got ample of the headroom here. And the sort of roof, the roof sort of curves down to the bottom, like so. Um, I've got plenty of knee room. Hope I not see this, but I've got plenty of knee room where I'm sitting. I can put my uh, feet comfortably under the chair. Uh, one trouble thing, you'll probably, it'll be a squeeze to get three adults in. Um, it's probably more suited for ch children. You'll get three children in, no problem. Um, and if you have, like I have, I've got two car seats in here. Um, so we've got two here, demonstrating the car, one car seat. And normally there's another one here as well, occasionally. You'll probably, you won't get another adult into the middle. It's very, very tight. As I said in the video, this is based on the C3 DS3 platform. So you're going to, it might be longer, the car might be slightly longer, but over width, width wise, it's still based on a, CS, uh, a C3. So that's don't expect it to be bigger width-wise than a C3. Again, with your doors, you've got, as I said, it's child locked. You've got your um, metal door handle here. You've got, there's no physical pull handles for the car. You've got this little uh, sort of storage space um, handle thing to pull, pull door shut. Feels pretty cheap to be quite honest. Again, it's that scratchy black plastic. And you've got a door bin down 
down here. Oh, let's see if I can spin in a wee bit. So you've got a door bin down here as well. Now, another feature that the cactus has is a weight saving uh, tool. Is there's no wind down windows. Simply, the window pops out. And I'll show you in more detail. But some people are going to hate this, but I quite like it. Um, especially if you're in the car on your own. This car doesn't have air conditioning, it doesn't have a sunroof. You can pop both these windows open on a warm summer's evening and you'll get a, you'll get a little gentle breezy air coming through. It'll keep the car ventilated and cool. So some people might like it, some people might not like it, I, but I like it. So I mentioned the pop out window, so here's a catch here. The pop out window. Like so. Right, I think it's time for a drive. Why don't you join me in part two of this video as we take the Citroen C4 Cactus for a drive? As always, feel free to like and subscribe to Scottish Car Enthusiasts and Trains TV, and I'll catch you in the video where we go for a drive.